everybody, it's Claire here from Sewn by Claire. Hope you've had a great day and a great week. Um, just to let you know that today we're going to be sewing the sailor dress, which is in the Lunar Lapin book. Um, and this one is the dress that we're going to be making. Sorry about it, it's a bit puffy because I've got my hand in Clementine's skirt to hold her up. Um, but as we can see, oh, it's whiting out of it, let's go outside. That's better. So we've got a lovely um, collar here, the tie collar. Excuse the pins, I've just run out of um, press studs at the moment, so I need to catch get some more. But I thought if I do the introduction and then get started, by the time I need them, I'll have some more. So lovely um, square collar on the back here and a nicely evenly gathered skirt. I know some of you have asked me before about how to do gatherings. So that will hopefully help when we do the, the tutorial about that. Okay, um, and um, we've got a lovely lace um, trimming on the end here and there's a couple of places on here where it might just be a little bit tricky for you if you're a beginner so I just thought that we I just put a couple of those places out now just so that we can kind of um, work through those um, and also I've made this test dress this isn't the one we're going to be sewing today I'm going to use a different fabric today because I want just to have a quick run through it first myself and I think there's a couple of places where I'm going to change the order of the construction and I think it's going to make it a lot easier for you so Bear with me, um, because I think that um, I want to kind of do that. I'm oh, sorry, new hair as well. So I've been to the hairdressers today and it keeps falling in my face. But um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, so getting this to line up at the bottom is one thing. OK, so that, that look, just looks seamless. Um, obviously, I've got a pin in there holding that together. On the inside as well, um, the inside of the dress isn't finished off neatly, um, in my opinion. It is overlocked in the instructions, but I think we can do a much nicer finish on the inside. Um, and the other thing is um, just the order of construction, really, is I'm, I'm going to change because the sleeves, I think, can go in before the collar. And I think then it'll make it easier for you because you've got less to have to navigate whilst you're trying to get those sleeves in straight because... The sleeves are quite sweet, but they're quite quite deep. Um, and so getting those in nicely without puckers as well is, is another um, idea I've got for you. So a few few treats along the way. So um, let me just talk to you about fabric as well, because this one I've made from, um, I've pinched an old shirt of my husband's actually, and that's what I've made this one out of. It's in a lilac stripe. And then I've just used a nice little um, um, ribbon trim that I'd got that I've attached on but the one that I'm going to be using for Luna is this this fabric here which again is another shirt from my husband you can see where I've cut the placket out um, before and this was the sleeve because I think this more closely resembles what um, Sarah Peel in the book has used um, and I'm also going to pair that up with some navy trim on there so that's what's going to be the one that we're going to make today um, this is the book here and this is the picture of Luna in her sailor's dress just here and she's got this um, blue and white striped dress and then it, she's got the little um, white collar and again there's the um, ribbon trim along the bottom there and we'll talk about how to put that on as well when it comes to it so the first thing you're going to have to do is find the pages um, for the pattern and then in the back of the book or you can go to the publisher's website if you've got a book and then you can print the pages off there and then they come out printed flat like this for you so you've not got to mess about with your book um, just make sure you print it out at 100 percent and that it doesn't scale to fit on the page or anything like that because you want these at 100 percent but literally then all you can put these pages then up at a window um and you can um then go over the edge of the pieces now i use either grease proof paper which works really well or i use tracing paper that i've got from a craft shop um and again that works really well now there is a point on here because on some of the pieces Sarah uses notches like this and they're really easy to see so on there you would just do a snip into the fabric I'll show you when we get on to doing that however on some of the pattern pieces here where there's seam allowance let me just find the skirt pattern because that was the one that flummoxed me just there is a line and that's actually a notch. Now, I missed that when I was tracing mine out the first time because I thought that was just a continuation of the seam line here. But that just there is actually a notch and that's on the waist on the waist of the skirt. Um, and there's another one just there that's quite obvious to see. But this one I did miss. So we'll talk about that as we go through anyway. But I thought I'd just mention to you that you can print these off the publisher's website um, and get all of those together so that you'll be there. 
So get your pattern printed off and then we'll talk about laying out the fabric and working with stripes just to make sure that you've got that in mind as to how you want to work with that and then we'll get going. I've just interrupted the proceedings just to let you know that to, I want to say a really, really big thank you to Jessica Wilding and Jackie Powell. Both of them have bought me a coffee and said that they'd like to see a tutorial on the sailor dress. So I want to thank both of them for sponsoring today's video. I'll just pop the names up here. Um, and I want to say thank you very much, ladies, for your kind generosity, both on behalf of myself and on the behalf of the people in the future who watch this video. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial um, today, Jessica and Jackie, and we'll get on with the sailor dress now. Okay, so I've traced off my pattern pieces and I've got them all just here to show you. So we've got the skirt piece here and that's that notch that I nearly missed that I've put in. That's two centimetres in from the edge that the buttons go on denoted by these circles here. And there's another notch just here. And I've added another notch here at the centre back because this part here goes on the fold of your fabric. So the skirt is double this length here. Okay, so that's the skirt, so that's all fine. Um, the collar is fine as well. You've got a little notch just here, just quarter of an inch in from the edge just there on both sides. And you can see those two just there. And then you've got another notch down the side just here as well. So that must just be for matching up the fabric because I, there's no other reason why you might need that unless it's for the top to the shoulder. But I, you, you're not going to need, you're not going to see it once it's sewn together. So that's the collar. So you're going to cut two in that and you're going to cut one on the fold in the skirt. The sleeve is straightforward as well. We've And we need to make sure we've got these notches here. We need one at the centre top of the um, sleeve just here. We need one on one side to mark the front. So one notch marks the front of the sleeve. And then we've got two notches here which mark the back of the sleeve. And because if you put this on top of each other, the curves aren't identical, one's slightly different to the other. And that's why we need to know front and back. Because if you try and put the back curve in on the front of the dress, it's going to just not sit right and not go in right. So let's make sure we've got those two notches there, the centre notch, and then one notch slightly further down, which is to denote the front um, of the sleeve. And we're gonna cut two out of that as well, so that's correct as well. The back of the dress as well, we've got two notches here, which will correspond with the two notches on the sleeve, so that's correct. And then we've got the front here, and that's got one notch on the arm edge, which is correct as well for the front of the sleeve, and it just denotes the front of the um, bodice here with this circle which will be for a press stud when we've finished that. So you've got a sloped v-neck on here before you then come down the front. I've got We've got the front facing here which is this sort of shaped piece. There'll be a back pace it, piecing as well which I've put down somewhere and not got but there's a back facing piece. Let me just find it in the book for you. Hold on one second. So there's a back facing piece that looks like this and then there's a loop that you're supposed to cut out in this. Now I'm going to suggest that you don't cut out the loop, you don't cut out the back facing, and you don't cut out the front facing either. Instead, what I want you to do is to cut out an extra two fronts and an extra back. Now I don't have the kit with me, so before you cut anything out, please make sure that you've got enough fabric. If you haven't, you're going to be cutting your collar out of a plain white fabric or whatever colour for your, for your collar. You could always double up on the fabric for your collar if you've not got enough of your stripe fabric to be able to cut these out again. So you would, if you were, if you hadn't got enough fabric in the all in the stripe, you'd cut out one set in the stripe because that's what the pattern would call for but your second set you'd cut out just in the plain white or a lining fabric of your choice that co coordinates with what, what with the dress that you're making the reason for that <clears throat> excuse me is that on the inside of the dress we've got this facing which is this part here so it starts here at the center front and then it goes all the way up here round the back of the neck and then down the other side to the front here. Now, for me, it's been zigzagged or you can overlock it and that's in the instructions. 
I just feel that that's just a little bit untidy because you can see all of your gathers in here as well, which again has been overlocked or zigzagged, but I've got a neater way. Um, and um, Ruth in my Facebook group as well has also got this I, this way of doing it as well. And, and she, she mentioned it in the group and I thought, yes, I'm already ahead there, Ruth. You, you've, you've said what I've said as well. So that's what we're going to do. Um, what I might suggest we do is just add a little bit extra onto the onto the front facing because we want enough to be able to put our press studs on. So yeah, I'm going to say put half a centimetre. Half a centimetre, is that going to be enough? Yeah, add an extra half a centimetre onto the front. I mean, you could argue that you don't need to add any more and it'll just it'll just reduce the amount of gathers, it's up to you. But we're going. what we're going to do is gonna neaten this edge first here before we actually put sew the dress in. So we're not gonna have a zigzag door overlock text just there. We're gonna turn it under and we're gonna have it looking really nice and neat on the inside, but we need a little bit extra to be able to do that. So just add, if you can, an extra half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch just on the on the button side of your front pattern piece and then that will come out on both of those for you your notch can stay in the same place don't don't change your notch that stays in the same place because what i want to do is i want to self line this skirt so that you don't see any of the gathers um, and you don't see anything else and we'll neaten it off around the arms as well just by hand just to make sure that that looks nice and neat when we finish we'll put those seam allowances on the inside and just attach it into those that stitching it sounds complicated but it's not and actually i think it'll be easier than trying to get this facing to sit still all the time because although i've even i've clipped my my um curve i think that that will just sit nicer once it's done the same on the hem here as well you've only got an overlocked edge on the hem and so if you want to keep the original length um i would just add half a centimeter quarter of an inch which will allow us to tuck that edge in and just make that neater as well you can argue it doesn't matter too much but do you know when you go into this much trouble to make something pretty then for me I think that that extra little bit is is well worth it so I'll put a note up here so that you've got it because we need to eliminate the front facing and the back facing and instead cut out the two pieces the two bodice pieces again and then we're going to add on this just this half an inch on, on the front edge here and then um, not half an inch half a centimeter on the front edge there just to turn under so we can neaten it and then um, a just a quarter of an inch on here as well which is just over half a centimeter isn't it on the hem and that will make all the difference again if you don't mind your skirt being a quarter of an inch shorter on 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 the character then then that's the same thing as well but i think i think you'll agree if anybody's made this already i think you'll agree it'll make it just a bit of a nicer finish the other reason why i've not said to do the loop is because that is seriously fiddly um i I tried it and I just thought, my goodness, that's difficult. Um, instead, I've just made a loop in the ribbon and then I've just joined it. But what I will do is probably for this one, I'll probably make a, a fabric one, but I'll play around with it first and work out what size that piece needs to be because I think that the piece that is in there is too small if you're going to be if you're going to be keep using it. And the other thing that we might do is we might I might say to you to secure it on the back once it's on the collar just to attach it because especially if this is going for, for smaller children that little bit's going to get lost really easily as well so again a few bits just to change but i think they're all improvements and i hope you'll agree so let me get on with this and um, get cutting out or oh, talking about stripes and then we'll, we'll get cutting out okay so the first thing we're going to cut out is this collar piece here now it's white on white so you're not going to be able to see it very well so i've put my red pins in just so hopefully that just outlines it for you and what i've chosen to do is i've chosen to put that pattern piece in half along the center back of the collar because it just sort of feels like it's using a lot less fabric that way so i'll cut one out this way with the fabrics on the fold here look 
um, cut one out that way and then I'll move it along and then I'll be able to cut another one out just here and it just feels like that'll lose use a lot less fabric because it's quite wide with these ears that spread out so hopefully that will make sense to you so that's going to go on to your contrast fabric whatever you've got for your contrast you might choose to make a sailor dress with a with a dark color instead I mean obviously that's up to you so what I'm going to do now is just is just trace not trace it just cut this out around the edges here and put my notches in and then I'll separate the pattern piece off. I'm going to mark my the right side. So on here, I've got the right sides to get on the inside. So I will put a pin just on the inside of my cut piece of fabric to show me that that's the inside. And then I'll do the same with the next piece when I get that cut out. Um, so let me just get that done and then I'll come back to you. So this is my first one cut out from just here. So now if I take the pattern, the um, pins out, I'm going to mark my notch. So we've got a notch on the side just here. So before I take the pins out, I'm just going to put the little notch in there. So you just go through about a sixteenth of an inch. You don't need to take out much. It's just a, just a few millimetres just to denote that when you're using your fabric that there's a start and end point just there. Notches are really important. There are clues, aren't they, for while we're dressmaking? So that's so. If I open that one out, remembering that my right side was on the inside, what I do now is just put a pin through this now, and that will always remind me that that's the right side that I'm working with. And as you can see, if we'd have put this on the piece of um, fabric, it would have used quite a lot. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now tuck this pattern piece into here coming up to this edge again so it's the second piece i don't need to mirror it because it's um symmetrical and then i'm going to pin this onto my fabric so you'll see this as i put my pins in and i think this if you've got enough length this, um to distance this will just give save you a little bit more fabric because you know i'm i'm very frugal with my fabric because i know how much it costs um and i don't want to ever forget that that's i've used one pin there haven't i how much it costs. Let me just get a red pin here. So that's my second one on there, and then I'll have used a much narrower piece of fabric. That's what I think anyway. Um, obviously, if you want to cut it out the way that it's said in the book, then please go ahead and do so. But you're just going to need, I save all these bits as well. You never know when they might come in handy. So have a nice scrap bag going as well. Um, so I'll cut out the second collar and mark the front like I have done with that one, and then I'll pop that to one side and we'll talk about working with stripes before we work, finish working on stripes. There's my two pattern pieces cut out now, um, and my, sorry, fabric pieces cut out, and there's my pattern piece. What I do now is just, I'm just gonna stack those on top of each other, right sides together, and then I'm just gonna pin my pattern piece back onto the top as well, because that also means that I'm not gonna lose that piece as well now, so that's all nice and marked up, and I'll pop it to one side ready to, ready to finish with that. So let's talk about working with stripes. So we've got this one here, and it's quite a nice blue and white stripe. There is a clear right side and wrong side. I can feel a difference in the texture. But the thing also to note as well is that actually these stripes here are not symmetrical. So this got this dark stripe going on one side. So sometimes if you're working with adult clothing, we might want to turn some pieces upside down so that we've got the dark the, the um, dark stripe all going out to one side. It's up to you whether you go to that trouble with these, these smaller um, pieces or not. The first thing I'm going to cut out, I think, is going to be the skirt. So let's pop this fabric together. And what I want to try and do is get it so that this fold here is following one stripe all the way up the edge here. We don't want it going off like that. So when you look at your fabric, you can see it go in at a diagonal. Hopefully you can see that. What we want to do is follow one stripe and then follow it all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna use that dark line on one of the stripes and then follow that all the way up, just adjusting it slightly. If you want to, you could even put in a pin to hold that stripe into place. You've just got to be careful you don't try and cut through your pin when you're cutting your pattern pieces out. But as I say, wherever we go to in cutting out this fabric we will um, for the pattern piece, we will do that. So we only need a, a section like that for now. 
So we've got our fold here. So let me just turn my fabric that way around so that we've got the fold on the side that we want. My pins are holding it all together for me and in the right place. And then we can place the fold of the fabric, so the fold of the pattern onto the fabric. We're gonna leave an extra quarter of an inch down the bottom. And we want to leave an extra quarter of an inch on this side, don't we? If, you, if you're doing it the same way I'm doing it, obviously you don't have to. You can follow the same way as in the book. It's construction is pretty much the same, um, but it's just, just a couple of places where it's slightly different. The other thing is that I'm using my silk pins. Um, these are red and white topped ones, throwing them all over me. Um, and these are by Clover. Um, I can just see it written on there. And you can buy these. They're not, they're not overly expensive, but what I find is that I'll get an ordinary pin that I might use and then I get a silk pin. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference, but the... The shank on them is slightly smaller and finer than it is on the other ones. So the blue one is my um, glass head pin and the other one is my silk pin. So there is a slight difference there. They're great for using if you do any lingerie or anything like that with silk or with, if you use satin as well, that type of thing, then you'll, you'll, these pins are, are great. I just got them from Amazon. So I can feel there's a pin under there, so I'm going to take that out now that I've pinned that down on that corner. And I'm just going to pin this across, and then I'll just remember to cut it out with that extra that we want to add onto these extra pieces. So that's how you get your, your stri stripe straight. Stripe straight, that's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, and that's what's important, especially when you're using stripes, because you might find that at the side seams, your stripes veer off and you want to avoid that. You want to get it all nice and straight. Um, and it's just the difference between sometimes you'll look at something and you'll think it's slightly wrong. And you'll then you'll realise that actually it's the stripes that are off or the pattern that's off and it's it's not been pattern matched. And it does make all the difference. So again, let's make sure your fabric's all nice and flat. Make sure your pins are all in to the right place. And then, as I say, I've just left a little bit extra down the bottom here, which you can't see there. So a little extra here, so I'm gonna cut off across here. So I've got a little bit extra on the length, and then I'm going to just add that little quarter of a seam across here. I'll just probably go to the next stripe and cut out along there as well. And then I'm going to mark my notches. So one at this, this point here, one at the center front, sorry side front that's for the side seams and then one at the center back as well I'm going to mark that notch on and then we'll be all ready to go with this piece and we'll get on with the bodice so here I've got my bodice attached to my fabric which is double so that I cut out two at the same time just remember that if you've got a particularly tricky stripe on your fabric you may want to cut them out singly so that you can match those stripes so that the same point is on this point at the top corner or this point is on the side or this point is the same so what you would do is you would choose a point on your pattern you could even trace your stripe through it to make sure that it's lying straight um, and then when you because you have to cut one out this way and then you have to turn your pattern piece over to mirror it so that you've got another one here so you have to have your pattern piece the other way um, then you can then match those up properly but for me I can just this is quite a narrow stripe so I'm just going to cut these two out um, out of it double and then we'll then go on to cut out the back and to cut out the sleeve as well in the, in the same way so the back needs to go onto the fold and the sleeve needs to be cut out as well and then we'll have all of the pieces that um, out of this fabric that I want to sew um, and then I'm just going to talk about the lining as well, but I think I'll choose a different colour for the lining so you can see the difference. Okay, back in a minute, moment. So I've chosen, I'm going to choose this um, alternative fabric for my lining so that you can see the difference when I'm working with it um, as to which one. So again, it's got a subtle stripe on it, so I'm just going to make sure that that um, is following one stripe all the way down so that my fabric is straight of grain. And then I can just pop my pattern pieces onto here then once I've done that, pin those on and then get those cut out. So you may be choosing either to use the facings or you might choose to use the same fabric as your dress. And that's absolutely fine. It's just that for teaching purposes, I just thought I would pop these um, onto a separate fabric. It'll all coordinate in the end and you won't see it. Um, 
So it's just a, just a way of doing that. So I'll pop that on there and I'm going to pop my back piece on here like that. And then get these all cut out, ready to get stitching. The only thing that I haven't cut out is the loop um, on the toggle yet, sort of like this, um, this little bit just here. But I'm going to save that to the end and then we'll, we'll look at it then and see what we what we choose to, to make that out of. But just for now, this will do for, for what we need to cut out. Okay, I'll get these cut out and come back to you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is follow the book because of the instructions and you might be doing the same with that. Um, I'm actually going to make the collar first. So I've got my two collar pieces here, my pattern piece, so I can take my, my pin off for now. Put that away for a second. I've got both of my right sides marked with my pins, so I know that I've got right sides together. So I'm just going to match up these pieces now. I can take the pins out because we've got those matched on top of each other. So I know that I'm right sides together, and then I'm going to just going to pin these pieces together. I'm making it look very clumsy, because <laughs> I just want to take those pins out. But basically these should just match straight on top of each other. And try and pin in the direction that you're going to be sewing it because that does help and again we've got this little one here they just need just to be lined up and they should line up and they do and then we're going to sew from across here so we're actually going to sew from this little notch here a quarter of an inch and we're going to come in first and then pivot and then go across so that might be a little bit be a little bit strange for you and what we're going to do then do is leave this section here between so we've got two notches one here and one here and we're going to leave that this bit open along here but we're going to sew all the rest of it so let me just um, pop these in and then I'll show you so I'm going to start just here I'm going to sew in and then pivot and then start my quarter of an inch in here. And this is all with quarter of an inch seam allowance up to the top and then down the side here around this flat bit and all the way back to there. And I'm going to come back down to here and then at the notch, I'm then going to sew across in again um, to one side. So we want to make sure that we've got this this notch is marked on your on your um, pattern pieces. Okay, so let me just get my machine ready for doing that. I'm just using a straight stitch and we're using it's construction, so we're just going to use a 2.2 stitch length. So excuse my squeaky chair. So a few stitches in, just a couple back. And then I am just going to have gone a bit too far, so I'm just going to hang crank it back to get my quarter of an inch back again. That's fine. And I can just start on here now. Now, keep your needle in your work because what we want to do in your fabric, because we want to be able to pivot around, we've got a curved edge here. So you might need to just lift up your presser foot. And if you've got your needle down in your work, you can spin your fabric around a bit to enable you just to follow this curve. It is quite a gentle one, but if you get any bunching under your needle, just lift up your presser foot and you'll see that tension under the needle will just disappear. So down into this point, I usually do one stitch flat across the point, one, one or two, maybe two in this case. Oops, go on then. Because so, you can never get quite a, a perfect point at the very end. And then we're going to just got to start and go down this back, back end again. So just make sure your collar's lying flat because that'll help it not rock up for you. A little bit of a curve the other way, but that's nice and gentle. And then we're coming down again to this corner here. And we're going to stop about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. We've got our needle going down into our work. Just take it nice and slow when you get in there. One more stitch, I think. That's better. Okay, and then we're going to go straight across. And I've got my pin the wrong direction. Put that out now. So make sure this is nice and straight across the bottom here. Into the corner again with another quarter of an inch seam so I can just test that by spinning it doing the pivot again really useful technique that pivoting is take our pins out as we go we don't sew over our pins you can damage your machine towards 
the top, a couple of stitches across and then down the other side. Let's pin that now because it's all holding still. This is where you might need the pivot. That's it, just straighten it up. So a quarter of an inch past that little dog leg. One more stitch and then across to the edge. And then I'm just going to reverse. Okay, the stitch is out. Machine out, what am I saying? Let me get my snips. There they are. Okay, and this is what we've got now. You won't be able to see very well because it's white on white. But as I say, a quarter of an inch in there, all the way around to the edge, all the way down here, all the way across the bottom and down the other one as well. Now, the one thing we have to do before we turn this out is we have to snip into the corner. So if you locate that pivot point that you've got just there and take your scissors, or your snips and then you're just going to do a little cut from this right angle here into that corner just there and then the same on the other side and that will just help you turn it out the next thing that we're going to do is take either our, oops, let me get them, our pinking shears because these will we run a curve and we want to trim the curve off so we need to just cut through that the other thing that you can do is you can take your scissors and you can make little triangles like this on your edge. And if you're not sure whether it's worth doing or not, just, just try snipping one like this. So you've got your little triangles out. And then try the other side and don't. Just, for, just, just when you turn it round and you'll find quite a lot of difference. So again, you can do little snips like that, do the same thing, or you can use your pinking shears. Um, and we're just going to pink and shear around there and then round this curve here and then on the corners here we want to take off our corners I usually take off a little bit extra than a straight across make sure you don't go through your stitches and don't go too close because you don't want that to start fraying but you just need to take off a little bit just to take out the bulk in that when you turn it round the other way so once you've used your pinking shears on the edges like this or done your little triangles or oh, we do need to take off the ends of the ties as well and again down this side here into that corner where we've snipped and that will just help this turn out and when it's turned out it'll help it sit flat and make it a beautiful colour for your character's dress so if you just want to do that and then turn your your collar out the other way and then you're going to take it over to the ironing board and then you're going to just press it flat so just be careful when you're turning this out that you're you don't damage the the collar as you're doing it if you've got a knitting needle with a blunt end and that's usually quite nice to be able to push it out or you can use the um, pointed end if you're really careful though it tends to because it's folding back on itself it can be a little bit tricky the other thing that you can do is use a pin and if you're very careful, you can ease out some of this fabric where it folds back on itself. And it will just help you just get this, this fabric to come through. It's just, a, it's just a bit of a test in patience and you've got to be careful that you don't snag your fabric at all because it would be very easy to do that. So just be really careful. If you've got a turning tool, sometimes people have got turning tools, haven't they? They can use those. But if you're gentle and you just take your time, it'll start to start to come out for you. Get it through. So once you've done this one, then you can go ahead and do the other side. So you want to kind of pull it through until you can see the stitches. And then you know you've got right to the very end. We've got those two couple of stitches that we did flat to flatten those ends, didn't we? So you can't ever get right down into a very big point because it, it the fabric just won't let you. Just pull out those edges until you've got a nice rounded end. And then you can just roll it in your fingers just so that you get those seam allowances right to the very edge. And just kind of just press it with your fingers a little bit and that will help. And then this side here, just make sure that you're right out to where your stitches are. You've not got anything folded in on itself. And again, down here in these corners, just going to pull those out as well, down to the end. And then once you've finished doing all of this, then you can 
press your collar flat it should lie absolutely flat and where we've got these extra bits here don't forget to just pull those out and you should end up with this little right angle in your stitching just there that's the bit that we snipped through if you remember and just make sure you get all of these bits all pulled out you can just roll it in your fingers sometimes and you can just get it to come to the edge that way then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to press this I can't see my press cloth at the moment, but I was going to show you my press cloth because I've got a silk organza press cloth that I use. Because what you don't want with a lovely white collar like this is to get just check your bottom of your iron first. Because your iron will be hot, then if you've got anything on the end on the bottom of your iron, it could very well come out onto your lovely white collar. And that's something that we really don't want to happen. So just be careful again, if you're just poking it out with a knitting needle, just be careful. You don't want to go through your fabric and make a hole. So just stop back, st hold yourself back from going all the way to the end and putting too much pressure on it. Okay, let me take this over to the iron and get this pressed flat and then we'll be working on the sleeves next. I'm going to get the sleeves ready next. Okay. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, so this is the collar all nicely finished. So just pay particular attention to these points just here and also to the ends of your ties. But also make sure that you've got these sections here pressed out nice and flat so that they're making those right angles that we need for when we're attaching the, the collar into the dress. So just make sure you've got particular attention to those two. Just to show you, this is my silk organza press cloth that I use. It's real silk and I've just overlocked the edges on it and um, you can see that when you're trying to press something you can see really clearly through it but the silk organza is robust enough that it'll just take the the searing heat of the iron off your off your garment and also it won't stop any watermarks from going through because this isn't waterproof um, but it will just stop any um, marks will come out off onto your silk organza first before going onto your collar so that's a really useful um, sewing tool to have. So we've done the collar, that's all okay now. We can just pop that to one side and now we're going to work on the sleeves because we're getting all things ready before we start working on the body. So if you locate your sleeve pieces, mine are here. And then I can tell that I've done my notches in my, my top and the one at the front and the two at the back, but also at the side here, there's a two centimeter hem on here. So again, just using either your fingers or your um, eyes, just determine which is your right side and make sure that you've got a mirrored piece. And then I would just put a pin in just to remind you. And if you're ever unsure, if you've got your two notches there, you should have two notches here. So you should have the, the right amount of notches facing each other so that you've got a right and a left. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to take this over to the ironing board and at those notches we are going to turn up a seam allowance here. But before we do that, <laughs> she says remembering what she's got to do, we're going to just zigzag the edge of this um, seam here so that when we turn that up then it's going to just not fray on us. So we're going to do a little zigzag stitch along here and along here as well with right sides up and then that will just then neaten that off ready for when we want to turn it over. So I'm going to use the zigzag stitch on my machine. I'm going to set the stitch width at being three and I'm going to do the stitch length at being 1.5. So that's a three width, so up and down is three the distance, but then the actual stitch length itself is um, is one and a half. So let me just go across here and do this. And what we can do is something called chain piecing. So if we're leaving that piece in, we can put this one right up to it and just carry straight on. Just means that we save a little bit of thread in between those two pattern pieces. So what we're going to do next is what I said originally is we're now going to turn this up at the notches 
at two centimeters give that a press because that'll help us just get a nice neat edge as well and then we're going to then and then we're going to bring it back to the machine and then we're going to just sew that down okay so i'll just be back in a second when i buy in those so remembering to put our stitch back onto a straight stitch before we carry on and then we're just going to pop this in the machine and then just stitch very close to that edge i didn't reverse stitch at the start and stop because we're going to be enclosing this in a um, seam soon so i didn't feel that i needed to because that could secure it down There. So we've got these very deep hems on these cut sleeves and then what we're going to do after that is we are then going to turn these cuffs back on themselves. So again, so that's where we zigzagged is on the wrong side. So we just turned up, this is the right side of our sleeve. So we've just turned up that um, two centimetres at the, um, I think it was two centimetres that we had to do, yes. And now we're just going to turn that back up again by one and a half centimetres and then we're going to just press that. So one and a half centimetres or one centimetre? Hold on one second. Let me just double check that. Sorry, one centimetre. Only one centimetre back up again. So that's that much. And I'm just going to put a pin in just until I can get it over to the ironing board just so it holds it for me. Just check, check the other side, one centimetre. That'll just hold it in place for me just whilst we just go and press it. And just pressing it just puts that memory into the fabric. So if you look on the sleeves here on the lilac one, that's this is what we're doing at the moment, this little turn up on the cuff. It's a nice little pretty detail, isn't it? So just fold that back over. The right side. That's it. And pop a pin in. And then, as I say, just take pop this over to the um, ironing board. You can sew it down if you wanted to, but it's not on the pattern, so it's up to you. Um, you could just put a nice little bit of top stitching in if you wanted to, just to hold it flat, but. That's personal preference. I'll leave that one up to you to decide if you want to do that or not. OK, let me just press those and I'll be back to you. So that's the right side of our sleeve and that's what it looks like. So that's our little cuff. And you can see the fold is, is to the right side of the cuff. And on the inside, we've just got this little narrow zigzag hem on the inside. So eventually these will be sewn together like that and it'll give this little cuff effect on the edge. OK. Let's pop those to one side. So we've got the collar done and we've got the sleeves done. Pop those to one side. Put your pattern pieces away so you don't lose those. And now we're going to choose our front and our back. So we're going to use our, our proper fabric, not our lining fabric at this moment in time. Although we are going to repeat it on there. Just locate which is your right side. That's my right side. Make sure I've got my right sides. That's smooth right, that's my right side. So right sides together. And we're matching up these shoulder seams. So I just laid one front with the V front, um, the V neck bit towards the centre front of the back. You can just put a pin in to hold that together. And then we can always put the other one straight on top as well so that we've got that lined up as well. So that's our second one all nicely lined up and pop a pin in there because we can sew these both together then can't we so we're sewing these right sides together and we're just going to use a quarter of an inch seam across here and i'm going to reverse and then sew and reverse and stop there and then come across to this side and do this one I'm on the right stitch and the right stitch length. Reverse. And 
again we can do our chain piecing if we want to. So snip off our start and end threads and I'll just snip through that little link of threads between the middle and there we've got our seams there and what we're going to do is just take this over to the ironing board and we're just going to press these seams here open on the top of the shoulder so they lie nice and flat for us. You can even just finger press them with your fingers, look, that will work too. Okay, so we're going to do that. So that's what it should look like with those straight edges for the V front at the front and then your curvy edges for your, around your arm. So we won't need to leave those bits together. So you can now repeat that actually, if you wanted to at this point with your lining pieces too. So let me just take the pattern pieces off there and we will just do exactly the same right sides together and then just sew those shoulder seams but we're just going to then just put the lining to one side for a second because it's all prepped then but we just need to have that ready so i'm going to have my right sides on the inside oops doesn't want to separate Is that on top there and that one on top there and then I'm going to pin these and sew these and then I'll come back to you so we can put the sleeves in. Right, so that's my lining fabric and that's my outer fabric so I'm just going to put my lining fabric to one side and we're going to be working with our main fabric our outer fabric for the dress. Now what we want to do now is to put our sleeves in. Now our sleeves have to go right sides together so have the right side of your dress front sticking up and then we're going to take a sleeve and we're going to locate which has got the single um, notch for the front. And then we're going to line that up with the front notch on the single notch on the front piece on the arms. We're just going to work with one at a time because it'll be easy and you won't stick yourself with pins then. But if we also locate the centre tops um, notch, little snip, and that needs to go on top of the centre seam centre seam as top of our shoulder seam that we've just sewn in the bodice and we're going to put a pin in and I would pin from your bodice side actually because we'll be sewing with this sleeve flat against the um, sewing machine bed. Then go to the underarm seam make sure you've got one notch and one notch matching because if you haven't you've got the wrong sleeve just change it for the other one and you just, just, just keep checking that you've got your right sides together. So you should have the cuff side up against the right side of your top. And then these should match up together. So match your notches. Because they should lie on top of each other. And just pin and match your raw edges up together as well. You're going to get a little bit of a crinkle because you've got a curve. You've got two opposing curves. But as long as you can get those... Um, edges together then you should be fine the one thing you can do is if if this bodice side doesn't want to stretch very much or isn't very forgiving you can put some little snips in as if you were just doing little notches just now we've located those other notches just put a, two or three little notches in along that and you'll be surprised how much easier that will just stretch out for you a little bit just to enable you to get that sleeve in because these are quite fiddly these little sleeves are so you just need to be we need it as easy as, as possible, don't we, to get a, a good result. So just be aware that that's going to sit in there. And so long as your sleeve is flat, we can manoeuvre this extra bit of fabric out the way as we start sewing, and you'll see how we do that. So let's just match up now the other um, underarm on the back of the dress and the back of the sleeve together and put a pin in there because that's one of our match points. Then locate our notches, make sure they're on top of each other because that will make sure that the sleeve is distributed correctly along the length of the arm. Call it the arm side, don't they? But I don't know, I don't like that word very much, I don't know why. Right, and then we're just gonna pull these edges together to make sure the raw edges are together. Okay, and another one just in there. It is a bit of pin central, which is why I say do one at a time 
but I think doing this before you do the collar will make it easier because otherwise you've got the collar bulk to try and work out and, and manage at the same time. So what we're going to do here is start here, reverse start, sew and then sew all the way along here at a quarter of inch seam allowance but we're just going to take it nice and slow because we want that sleeve to be nice and flat. Let me just repin that one. Didn't look as if it was sitting nicely enough for me. So just make sure that you're happy that you, you'll be able to sew at that quarter of an inch seam point without having any um, ruckles or puckers in your stitching because we want it to be nice and smooth. If we look on the sample dress, this is the bit we're doing here now. We're putting the sleeve in here and we want that to be nice and smooth without any puckers in it at all all the way along so that just takes a little bit of practice and if you want to tack it first by hand then all means if you're not happy navigating all of these pins then feel free just to tack it first and then that might might just help you as well um, I'm going to go for it so take a deep breath and pray for me hopefully I'll be okay and we'll see how we get on but as I say if you're if you're nervous at all then just um, tack it first Nobody will ever know, and it doesn't matter. It's what, what you're comfortable with. So reverse at the start and stop. Turn the speed down a bit so you don't get too carried away with the speed. And put your needle in your work as well so that we can pivot because we've got a lot of curviness to accommodate here. The other thing you might want to use is your awl, which is your spiky tool, just to make sure that all of these edges are sitting properly. And if you need to, you can lift up the bodice and pull, pull the pull the sleeve back so that you can get these edges to, to, to match up together and that's going to give you your best chance of success when you're sewing this so just remember to use all of your tools at your disposal because this is a little bit fiddly it's a very tight curve and I say we're just sewing opposing curves together get my pedal my pedal wants to run away from me just take it nice and steady, needle in the work. If you have to just lift and just manoeuvre the, the bulk of the fabric, then just do that as well. Just keep going around. Take it nice and steady. Oops. Just coming around towards the top now. Sometimes I'd rather take it steady than have to unpick it so just make sure it's as smooth as it can be. I think we're just about on the top now. So again we're just moving the bulk around and where we've used and, and where we've sewn already. We're just starting to come down the other side now. take off our thread start and stop because even if we have to undo it we still need to take those off let's have a look first this side okay it's not looking too bad have a look on this side here yeah that's okay that's gone in nice and smoothly might need it needs a little press but there's no actual puckers in there anywhere so I know that that's all fine and once that's in that'll give us a lovely little sleeve so let's do the same. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the other side. You don't need to watch me do that one as been as you've seen me do this one. Just reverse, rewind the video if you need to see because I shall be using exactly the same technique. Oh, do you know what? I have got a little pucker in it just there. Sometimes you can smooth them out. If not, if you've got a pucker and you're not happy with it, just right on top of the pucker, use your quick unpick and remove that stitch then go back two or three stitches one way and two or three stitches the other way and then just smooth the fibres with your fingers and then put it back in again and then just go a couple of stitches 
past the ones that you undid so that you're back onto your sound stitching, reverse and stop and then join up again and reverse and stop and that should help. I think because of the busyness of this stripe, no, I'm going to go back and redo it. You know I will do anyway, don't you? So I'm going to go back and just redo that bit and then put the other sleeve in, but I'll do exactly what I've just said in terms of correcting this pucker um, and then it will all be straight hopefully for the next one. Okay, so I've just got my sleeves in here with their turns up there. That's the back of my dress and these are the two fronts. What we're going to do now is reach for the collar piece and we are going to now rest that on the, on the back of the collar there. And we are then going to match these down the front sides down here. So it should just sit straight on top. I'm going to put a couple of pins in just to hold it steady for me and then we're going to hand tack this in place just first off I mean you can do it by machine if you want to but just make sure those um, corner seams there are just in right where they should be so tops of the shoulders and then you might just have to curve this collar in just here just to make it just sit nice and flat on there so yeah and we're just going to um, tack this on at just under um, a quarter of an inch because we want our tacking stitches to be hidden when we actually go to sew this. Just make sure that when you put in your collar on, you catch at the same point the edge of that um, shoulder seam as well. So mine's a little bit proud in this centre, but that's just a cutting out, um, just, just anomaly. Don't worry about that. But then down the front, just pull it in so that it just hits on the edge there. So that's what you're going to end up with is the collar is going to be just, it doesn't match right down to the point. So don't worry about that because that's the bit that we need on the dress here. If you look, this is why it's always good to have a practice dress is that the collar ends before the, the front of the dress, if you can see there. So when that collar's folded down, there's a little bit extra on the front here, which we, which we need just for that shaping there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do at the moment is just going to hand tack this on. So we get some tacking thread and a needle. I've got some brown in this one, will do nicely, won't it? Only has to be a single length, it doesn't have to be um, a long one, but that should be enough. Do our quilters knot? There's a video on my channel for how to do a quilters knot if you want to do one of those. And then just gradually, and also just do a double stitch, just holding down the edge of this collar so I'm starting just off the collar so that, that holds that bit of that collar down just there look a little stitch and then we're just going to stitch this just slightly less than a quarter of an inch because because we're going to be putting next the the other bodice piece on we want to make sure that we've got this piece anchored down correctly because when it's sandwiched between the two bodice pieces and even if you're using the facing then if when it's it'll be exactly the same, then that is what is recommended is just to hand tack this down in place and just make sure, take your pins out as you go. And just make sure by looking on the other side where your stitches are that you've got everything all tacked down all nice and neatly. Let's just keep going round here. And I'm sure you've seen tacking before, so you don't need to watch me all the way around. But that's what, I'll, especially when my needle is just unthreaded. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Just, just tack that down all the way around and then finish here. Just make sure all your raw edges are matching up as much as possible. I think that's just a little cutting out there just there. So I'll trim that back so that I, I know where I am. So anything like that, I'm just going to snip that little bit off so it doesn't um, get in the way and confuse me. Because I won't see the edge of the collar when I'm doing my quarter of an inch seam and I might just miss that. So I'm just going to make sure that that's all straight. I'm just going to finish this off, thread my needle, finish this off. And I'm going to do a double stitch at the end here to make sure this end of the collar, because we don't want that to be able to flick back like that underneath the facing. We want it all to be nice and fixed down. So that's what I'm going to do next. OK, so when we've finished, we've got this all tacked down onto the front. You can see the dark thread just there. So that's tacked with the, with right sides together. But, well, there's no real right side and wrong side with the collar if it's the both ways round. But you want the right side up so that it's sitting the way that it will be worn um, on, on your character. The next thing that we're going to do first before we do anything else is we are just going to neaten off the edges of these um, arms because when we put this to together, it'll be easier to do it now. 
So what I'm going to do is just sew just under a quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. I'm not I'm not sewing it to anything. It's just a guide row of stitches so that we can snip up to that. And you'll see why that will help us when we then come to put this bodice inside to make it neater. And this is why we're doing it this way is just to make it neater on the inside. And hopefully you'll agree it gives a really nice finish. And it is the kind of finish I would do if I was doing the same dress, but for a child um, so that it was nice and neat inside. So all I'm going to do is just run on a 2.2 stitch, I don't need to reverse and go forward again, just under a 2.2, put my needle in my work and just pivot because we're quite tight. It'll just flatten down that seam allowance as well for me. Don't need to reverse, needle up. And I'll show you in a minute what we'll do with this because I'll do the other side in a minute. What we're going to do then is we're just going to put some little snips in at right angles to that seam, right up to those stitches, but not through them. Because what that's going to do is allow us to just um, press this seam, back, these um, little edges back. So this isn't a time for using your pinking shears. And if you, where you've got this seam allowance here, look, we can trim that back a little bit. So they've got the little ears of the seam allowance, they can just come off. Just a small amount, but it just cuts down on the bulk. And then we just carry on snipping up to, but not through those stitches. Just at regular intervals, just about two eighths of an inch from each other. Because then when you take this to the pressing table, you'll be able to press these flat towards the inside so that you're just on that edge of that stitched edge. I mean, you might even just be able to finger press it, actually. It might just... I mean, this is the, this is the beauty with cotton, isn't it? And with um, sh suiting, shirting fabric. is it, and, a, and same with, like, a tarn lawn or something like that, if you were using that for the inside. So can you see, I'm just pressing that back so that when you look from the inside, you can just see those stitch, that stitching, but it's all just nice and neat from the inside. So... And that's what I would do because it just gives you a line to work towards so you know what, what you're, um, how you're doing it. And actually, I can finger press this quite well. So there we go. So we've got a nice edge. And if I go on this side, you can see all those little bits are just all pushed in. I probably will press it just to give it a bit of steam just to make sure it's all flat. But that's what you're wanting to do. And, and actually, you can see on here how these cuts splay out in order to sit nice and flat and, and not pucker. Okay, so I'm just going to go and do the other side and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so here we are with our pressed um, bits in. And now what we're going to do is just seat that straight over the top of our bodice with our collar attached on. And what we want to do is make sure that these sides, the um, shoulder seams match up because they should be identical. So match those up right with the raw edges together put a pin in so I would actually match those up first because if your seam allowances on your shoulders are correct then those bits should be correct oops get my pins and then we want to match down the front so then match these little points on the center front with a pin because that's another match point isn't it that we've got just make sure your collar's out of the way so you're not going to catch your collar and then down at what will be your waist for the bodice waist. And put a little pin in there. Let's go around the other side now and do the other centre front because that then keeps that all nice and neat. And because we have to push these little ties to one side out of the way, that's why I said before if we do that double stitch, it'll make sure that they don't twist out of alignment and then. Um, you, you know you can see them what them um if you're not careful the raw edges when you've when you've sewn your dress and we don't want to do that so again at this point here make sure that that's all sitting nice and flat and correct and you've got everything all together and then pop a pin in at that point there so that's the point where the collar is sewn onto the bodice so that's all that's all flat and straight and if you look i'm leaving the back of the neck to the last minute because that's the trickier part so just pull your, pull your fabrics apart. You want all those raw edges all together so you can see them. 
and just as I say just make sure that collar edge is in there just nicely it should be because you've tacked it that should all sit nicely on top of each other and then once you're ready then you can then make sure that you do these other bits on the center back together here and then I just put one either side of the center back as well so if you were using the facing you would do exactly the same as this but with the facing instead so whereas we joined the body's shoulders together you join the front and the back of the um, facing together um, at, the, at the shoulder seams again and you would still just place it on you just wouldn't have all of this bit here and here and here because that's the extra bodice that we've cut out so that's why we're going to do it. and then what we're going to do now is we're going to start here and reverse stitch here and then go up to here and pivot and then go all the way around here and pivot all the way around all the way around the back of the neck then down the front again Pivot at that point there, making sure that our collar is, is loose and is not caught in, because you don't want your collar caught in at that point. Yes, you do here on the neck, but this is going down the centre front again, so make sure that's out the way. So pivot there and then reverse and stop just there. And as you can see, between the lining, as you can see on the top of mine, there's my collar on the in-between that we've tacked on, and then there's the outside of my fabric. That's the top fabric that you're going to see as the dress. This bit you won't see once it's inside. It's just a lining fabric, but that's how it looks. Um, and that should then or hopefully make sense. So I'm just going to do that now. So let's just pull this round. So start at this front here. Just make sure your little tie's out of the way and not going to get caught in with where you are. And a quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. And it's a 2.2 straight stitch for the construction. So coming up to this front here. So when you can see your front, put your needle in your work. Maybe one stitch more, I think. Yeah. And then we're going to then pivot and go around here. So I left my needle in my work while I lifted up my presser foot. And then I could twist round. And now I'm just using my, my the edge of my presser foot here. Not quite the edge, but the mark that I use for my quarter of an inch. And I'm going straight up this side here to the shoulder seam. Might leave my pin in. Sorry, leave my needle in my word, but take the pin out. <laughs> Get my words right. And then I'm just flattening this all down again so we can see where we're going. It was all folded up underneath before, whereas now we can see. So now I can lift up my needle and take a couple of stitches just to start that pivoting process and take this pin out because that's quite a tight curve just there. A couple more stitches as I'm just gently moving this round. Just a couple more stitches, two or three, and that's all you need just while you go around the back. Come into the centre back now. Take that pin out. And again, then we're just going to just keep, just lift it. And it's just slight movements, but you'll be surprised how much difference it makes in terms of making your edges so nice and curved rather than making them all straight and, and jolted really and, and zigzaggy. So a couple of stitches around to there, a couple of stitches over the top of the shoulder as I'm just moving it across and then I can go down this straight front, quarter of an inch, down to where I feel my corner is. And then I can leave my needle in my work while I just check. Yeah, that's about a quarter of an inch. Make sure your tie's out of the way so you're not going to sew that into your seam because you don't want that sewed down. Make sure your raw edges are together. And then reverse at the end there. So if I lift this up, you should be able to see this white thread, I think, on top. So that's what I've done. So I've got started here, across to there, pivoted, round the, there, curved round the back of the neck look pivoted here again round to the front there and then off and then reversed okay so the next thing we're going to do is because we've got a curve here is we're going to snip so this is where you have to be brave and so we're going to snip from this point here just before the side seam and we're so that's not side seam before the shoulder seam sorry um, and we're just going to snip at right angles to the stitches up to but not through the stitches Hopefully you can see that. And these little snips just mean that it'll just turn out correctly and just make it sit nicely where it where it needs to go. So I'm going through the collar and through the two um, 
the bodice pieces if you're using the facing you'll be going through the facing too and just snip through up to but not through those stitches and then I would just just do one again just take off these edges if you can if there's anything you can snip off on the shoulders just to make that a little bit easier and then here we want to just take off some of this bulk on this corner so just cut that off so that you've got a little nice um, edge there it just takes out that bulk when you just go to turn it okay and then what we can do then is we can start and turn this round so we can pull it through I see a little bit of my tacking stitches there but we can pull that out and we're just going to pull this out so that the collar is proud of the fabric of the lining fabric and that should make that all sit all nice and just use your fingers just to push out those bits to the center front there's our collar it is anchored in that's good and this side too oh that's just a little bit close for my liking I might just redo those a couple of stitches just there just to hold it let me have a look on the inside so if we open up the seam allowance on the inside, we'll see how much is actually... Oh, no, it, it is all okay. Yeah, enough has been caught. That's fine. So I'm just going to use my quick unpick and just take out the um, tacking stitches that I can see, making sure that I don't catch the stitches I've just sewn. And just take out any that you can see. If you can't see them, you don't need to take them out. But um, as I say, I can just see a few of mine. So if your, if your collar had got loose in, in your stitches, then just go back on the inside, just like this, and then you can just check it. And if you're not happy, just come a little bit further um, to the inside of your garment that, than you were before, and that should be fine. The next thing you're going to need to do is just press out these corners. Remember that little point at the front there? And then you're going to make sure these stitches are like, these edges are lying flat and round the collar. And then you're just going to Pre um, press all of that flat so that it's all sitting away from the collar okay so your collar needs to be proud because then when she's wearing the dress your character that lining will all sit on the inside and I might well do just a little bit of a what's called under stitching just to hold that out the way because I think that would be a, a good thing just underneath the collar just so that it holds it nice because that's where the where the bulk is isn't it but there we go, we're getting a little bit of a bodice together. It's looking nice, isn't it? So let me just take this to the ironing board and I'll iron it flat. And then as I say, I am just gonna do a little bit of what's called understitching, but I'll show you that in a second when I come back to do that bit. So here's mine after it's all been pressed. I've just started to rearrange it, sorry, for the next stage and I just thought I'd better just show you. So it, it's kind of sitting straight. It will, it will sit straight. <laughs> With a little bit of gentle persuasion um but it's just it's just trying to get that so that it's all nice and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of stitching underneath here just to hold these two sections together so that that all sits all nice so what we're going to do is i'm just going to start about half a centimeter well no, about a centimeter up from the where this collar meets in here and i'm pulling both sections of the bodice away from the collar and i'm just going to sew along here and i'm going to pivot at this point here and then across around the back here. And all the time, I'm just gonna keep pulling all of that bodice and all of the, the inside of the bodice and the lining and the outside. And then I'm gonna stop here um, about a centimeter away from the edge of the collar here. It just has to be a 2.2 and I'm just gonna be about a 16th of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Make sure you can see as best as you can. Sometimes the light isn't good. It's for some reason it whites out. Even without just having my sewing machine, um, it just whites out. So I do apologise. Um, but absolutely nothing I can do about that. I don't think. If anybody's got any tips on lighting, then please let me know. So I'm just going to do that little stitch and reverse, and then I'll just put my needle in my work so that I can then manoeuvre everything with confidence. So I'm just going to do the next bit by just making sure that I'm pulling on both pieces so I'm pulling both pieces apart if you like just do a little bit more and then just get into the top here just making sure that I keep pulling to make sure that that's all 
flatten away. So a few more stitches round. And again, just making sure that everything's lying flat and just pulling away. So I'm just pulling those, as I say, the bodice and the lining away from the collar. Oops, got stuck on the shoulder. So just be careful, just help it along a little bit. And just by pulling them out flat, you can pretty much get round quite well. And say so it'll just make that collar just sit really nicely. Same as understitching, really. And uh, make sure it's not caught on that collar. And then about a centimetre away from the edge, we can just reverse. And just snip your threads off nice and neat. show you now that's just just held that's that's my stitching there if you can see that just along that edge there that's how far away I am but now when I just put that collar down just look how nice and neat I mean it needs a little press but look how nice and neat that's just all sitting and that's the inside that's our lining on the inside and it's just holding everything down and away it just stops the lining from poking out on the inside um, and that should then be, be fine. Right, so the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to sew our lining pieces together. We're going to start with that. Oh, you can't see, can you? Sorry. <laughs> so that was where I was just sew, sewing the line that down and it all lies nice and flat, as you can see, with the collar. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is take our lining and we're going to put right sides together at the underarms. There's no sleeve in this underarm, don't forget. And we're just going to put those right sides together, you can pin them if you like, and then we're just going to sew those with a quarter of an inch seam, that one and the other one as well, right sides together. Such a short seam, you might not need to pin, but if you want to, then please do go ahead. Just finger press those seams open. Just like that. Okay, let's do the other one quickly. Just get your edges together so that it's the waist edge and the underarm edge together. And snip our threads and just finger press that seam open because now we're going to do the seam now with the sleeves in it in exactly the same way but I just want to do the lining ones out of the way first because they've not got the sleeves in yeah so now go to your sleeve now you've got to make sure that your cuff is folded already so fold the cuff where you where the ironing mark was and put a pin in the end there just to hold those cuffs into place or the sleeve into place Get your right um, the edges together and then match the underarm pull it straight and get those underarm seams matched together and push them both towards the bodice okay on this occasion because we're going to neaten those off so i want both seam allowances pushed towards the the inside of the bodice so down towards this waist seam away from the cuff and then we're going to have another pin down at the bottom on the bottom of that seam which will eventually be the waist so that's the bit that we're doing so this is the cuff edge that's the underarm with the seam allowances pushed into the body and then this is the um, waist edge of the dress so we're just going to sew this now with a quarter of an inch seam allowance but just be aware that just where those cuffs are it's quite um, thick so your machine might not like it so just have your all. Did you see that ping all across the room? Just use your awl or your quick unpick just to hold onto the fabric for you, just to help it through. When you get to that underarm seam, right on top of those stitches, needle in your work and pivot, and then you're just going to come down again, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just reverse. Let's 
do the other side. So fold our cuff down first and then put that right sides together. And pop a pin in because that's our first reference point because that under that cuff there needs to match. Then to our underarm seam and we're going to push both lots of underarm seam in towards our body and towards the main part of the bodice and join those with a pin. Oh, doesn't want to go in, that's it. And then at the waist seam as well at the bottom of the bodice, we're going to join that together as well. So that's the second side. So just sew down this side exactly the same way as I've just done the other one. So once you've got both of those done with your scissors, locate just where that pivot point is and from the right angle in here into that pivot point, just put a little snip with your scissors or with your um, snips just so that you just release that seam, un seam allowance under the arm. Again here, where, locate where the um, seam is, that's the cuff and that's the bodice, I've got it upside down at the moment, um, and that's that right angle, and just go into that with your snips, and it'll just release that for when you then turn it round the other side. So what we're going to do then is we are going to now just fold our bodice and let our sleeves just poke through, because when, we, when we're doing the finishing off stages, we're going to poke this um, the little tags of the seam allowance through and you'll see that we'll be able to match up those two stitched edges and we'll just be able to neaten that off around the, around the sleeve. We're not going to do it now because I want to be able to work with... Oh, I suppose we could... No, let's do it now because it's, it's all part of it, isn't it? So, just... To, so... <laughs> right, go back a bit, Claire. Hold on a second. Right. So, we've just done these underarm seams just here. And what we're going to do now is take our bodice where we've got our, that little guide stitching and then we've got our snips and you're just going to poke your sleeve through there. So it's like that. I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to just take our fingernail and just poke under those edges, matching up the um, underarms, not, not, yeah, the underarm seams those side seams, so that's all nice. And you just, I keep twisting mine round, don't I, sorry, but I'm just matching up basically those two rows of stitching on the edge there. Hopefully you can see that. So the edge has been tucked in. So what you can see now is the lining, is the right side of the lining that's going to be on the inside of the bodice. And let's just move around here and just tuck that in and then it should lie straight on top of the la stitching that you've done for your sleeve. Okay, and just put a pin in just to hold the two together. Because what we're going to do then is just do a little hand stitch inside here and just tack all of that down. It's going to give you just a lovely, lovely um, finish on the inside you don't have to be too tight with your stitches when you're doing this have a little bit of movement just in case they don't match exactly but they, they should pretty much be about right as you can see we're almost back to the beginning again so just make sure that seam allowance you pressed it just turns under nicely for you and then we're back to the beginning again almost looks like a waistcoat doesn't it with a shirt sleeve poking out so there we go Hopefully that makes sense. So this is our column. Just get your bearings again for you. So this is the waist of the of the of the bodice here. This is where the lining is. So that eventually this will be the other way around. We're working on the inside of the garment. Eventually that'll be poked through there, won't it? And that'll be the outside of the garment. And this is why I've got a different fabric, so you can see when I'm working on the inside and not. So that's my lining, and we're we're neatening off the inside of this armhole here because we haven't got a sleeve on the inside of the lining. And what I'll do is I'll just take some of my thread and a needle. Got one just here that I used for tacking earlier on, and I'm going to need my specs because it's quite fine work. But again, it's just these little bits that are just going to elevate your stitching and the um, end result and make it really lovely on the outside. It only needs to be single um, thread, it's not doesn't need to be double. Just put your quilter's knot at the end there, just to hold on to that. I would start at the underarm. Let me just put my glasses down. Start at the underarm here 
and take a couple of stitches in the seam allowance of the underarm and just attach those two together. And it's important that you get the underarm seams on top of each other because otherwise you'll be twisting your lining and then when your character is wearing the outfit it won't, it won't sit right. Just caught that pin with my thread. Whoops, hold on a second. I'm supposed to be showing you what to do and I can't even do it myself. Right. Okay, so we're locating the underarm, sti the stitches of the sleeve where the sleeve was. And you can almost go through the stitch of the sleeve uh, where, on the armhole and then just through the stitch on the edge. Pins get in the way a little bit. Don't do it too tight. And then just, just go round and just do the whole way round. You don't have to do every stitch, do about every eighth of an inch and just neaten up any threads that you see that need to be neatened up along the way. As I say, and it'll it'll just it just neatens up. It just means that the seam allowance then will just stay on the inside there. I think every stitch I'm catching these pins. You get the idea anyway, just going round. So you're just sewing that to there all the way around and it'll, it just gives this lovely neat finish on the inside and you won't see any of the stitching. It's a great finish this is if you were doing adult clothing or children's clothing then you can do the same thing but as I say just don't have it too tight on your stitches. Okay so this is what you should have at the moment from the inside this is, keep getting little bits of fluff, is you should have your um, sleeves all arm side all nice and neatly finished and then when we push this through to the right side like this and that's all going to sit all nice and neat. And you're not going to realise that that lining's there from the inside, from the outside at all. Just going to sit nicely like this. Okay, so, and then we've got the underarm seams here. So at this, this um, if, if you're using my way and using the, the lined bodice, then that's what we've just done. We've just fully lined that bodice like that. So it's all nice and neat. All the raw edges are hidden. The only thing that we do need to do now is that I, because these arms are so tiny, you can't actually get in to, um, to um, knead them off very well or, or to sew the hems afterwards. So you do get this bit that sticks up on the inside of your sleeves. So what I do is either just, just press them open and then just put a couple of stitches just on the sewing machine just to hold them flat or you can put them both to one side if you want. But if you do that, I would suggest you put them towards the back. I think I'm going to leave mine open. And then I'm just going to flatten those down. And then if you just very carefully put them under the sewing machine, you should be able to just put a couple of stitches in and then reverse back. Oops, moving the camera, sorry. Because it's on the underarm of the on on the underarm, you won't actually notice it. So let me just show you what the how that's done. So so that's that's without it being fixed down. Can you see how it's just sticking up? And then if we look at the one that I've just done, look how much flatter that one looks. So again, it's just one of those small little things that that is an extra little step. It only takes a few seconds, but again, it just elevates everything. I think and just makes it. Just that, that little bit nicer. Just backwards and forwards. I'm sure your machine manages to get over the bump okay. Got the right nested threads there, haven't I? Cut your threads off nice and close to it. As I say, it'll just neaten that off and just keep it. If you'd have wanted to have um, neatened those edges, you could have done that, but then obviously you'd have to just push those to one side. So then, so that's our bodice all finished for now. Um, so the next stage then, we're going to be grabbing our um, skirt pieces and we're going to be working on those. Let me just get that together and I'll be right back. 